Nevertheless, this is the 2007 New Zealand election special. I'm John Campbell. And uh, <laughs> I'm not sure who I am. Maybe I'm, who's the mother of the nation? Judy. Oh, Judy Bailey. Judy Bailey. Okay, Judy I'll, Bailey. I'll oh. call you Judy Bailey then. Okay, and. Um, I, I'm sorry to say. We miss you, Judy Bailey. We miss you. R.I.P. <laughs> no, no, I think she's still alive. Oh, she's but still she, alive? But she's just retired. I'm sorry. I'm just like, we miss you. We miss you on, on air. Yeah, we miss with you your, on air. You were, you were great. Yes. <laughs> you, 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 know, you, you know, she's more up there than the Briscoes lady. Oh, the Briscoes lady. She creeps me out. <laughs> you can't be happy all the time. I... It, 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 like, the best part about Judy Bailey is that she changed her accent. Yes. From the um, from the English Oops. New Zealand to the New Zealand English, you you can tell from when she started back in the. Um, so she started with the received pronunciation and became more Kiwi as time yeah. went on. Yeah. Because you know you know before the broadcasting school was open in Christchurch. Yeah. They had to go to the BBC in London for track. Yes. So am I leaning towards her earlier part of career, my, my accent? Yes. Leaning towards the earlier part of her career. Yeah. So like um, late eighties, early nineties. Oh, okay. That's interesting. No wonder why no wonder why people can't get my accent. It's just weird. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. Right. Shall we talk about mental health and policies? You know, to link back to the introduction. No, 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 no. Oh, we'll, should we just get on with it? We'll, we'll, we'll just get on with the essential stuff. We won't We won't talk about policies. We won't talk about anything like that. We'll actually just talk about... How to vote. Let's talk about Let's talk about something neutral. Let's get voting. Let's get voting. Okay. First things first. It's not too late to register. Believe, believe it or not, you can still register up to pretty much the last minute. I'm can... sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah? Didn't you mention this to me? A couple of weeks ago. What do you mean? Like a month ago. What do you mean? Like worrying today. When am I going to get my packs? Or was it? Or was that somebody else? It was somebody else. Okay, because everyone was stressing about. Oh, when am I going to get my pack to vote? I'm just like, calm down. It's gonna come. Yes, it's it is possible to actually to actually basically register up to the last minute at special voting booths. You can't. I don't think you register by post now. Because it's a little bit too late, and besides, the postings are really slow these days. Not recommended. But you know, you can go to the post office or go to your um, just search it up. Okay. Um, yeah. I th- is a- will AUC become a voting booth? It has. It has become where? Which building? WA. Oh, in which case I'll go vote today after the class. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not telling you who I'm voting for though. No, it's fine. Yeah. I don't need to know. I don't care. Have you decided? You don't have to tell me. You don't, no, 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 no. I, I still haven't decided. It's, it, it's. Welcome to the As You Undecided podcast. I know, and I'm like, the polls are just, the polls are just too close. Yeah. For me to go one way or the other. But you're not voting for. They're just winner. so close. What? So what are you looking for when it when it comes when it comes to candidate? I, I'm I, I'm looking. What now? What what what? But if you if if you look at the um, if you look at the candidates, right? Yeah. And we're, and we're talking about uh, uh, Auckland Central here. Yeah. I we all know who's gonna win, right? But because. Which vote are you? Auckland Central. You're in Auckland Central. Yeah. Okay. And j- j- just like where you live in Epsom, we all know who's gonna win in Epsom. Yeah. Right. But it's those those in between ones, like if you take. Um, New Plymouth's going to be a very tricky one to vote for. Palmerston Moore's going to be very tricky. Yeah. Um, Bonganui's going to be really tricky because most of them, they are um, either on the very equal on the list MPs yeah. or the completely newcomers like in Bonganui. Oh, yeah? Well, w- word to the wise, Bonganui was my old electorate. Oh, yeah? So that's how I know so much about it. Um, no doubt, Māori Party's going to get three MPs. Oh, yeah? They're going to get Manama, Dururua, and Howard Tamati. Mm. Depending on how their vote goes, um, I think that Tamati Coffee's going to beat Tururua Flavel. Wait, 
The weather guy? Yeah, the weather guy. The old weather guy who is the um, Labour MP for Rotorua. So, coffee. Well, if you live in New Zealand long enough, you know Tansy Coffee is either the presenter from TV. I think he used to present a kids' show. What now? I remember watching that. Yes. Then he moved on to Breakfast Weather, and now he's a politician. Yes. We, okay, so that's probably... At least he knows how media works. He can definitely use that to his advantage. Yes. And no doubt he has some old friends from TVNZ that might help him too. Probably. Yeah. Um, I will say that... Um, oh, what is it called? Um, what's the far north Māori seat? Oh, Kate Ringanger? Te, oh, te Tai Tokoro. Te Tai Tokoro. Is that mana stronghold? <sighs> well... It is, but Calvin Davis won last time. Which party was he? He's the he's the deputy leader of Labour now. So Calvin is Labour. Yeah, and he's going against Hone. Mm. And, and and everyone's like, like a lot of people have been saying vote for Hone because Calvin's going to get in regardless because he's number two. Yeah. On the Labour list, so no matter what, he's in. Okay. Um, other than that, most of the most of the um, most of the electorates have already been already been sorted. Oh yeah. Like, like, like for instance, like the percentages are just so good at the moment. You're talking about um, an above ten percent spread. You still sh- you should still vote though. Of course, of course. Um, so. You know, m- my basis on voting yeah. is who, who I think, if I weren't the ch- well, the winner is going to win, Yeah, I would tend to vote for the person who I think should stay for the next election. Oh, yes. Does that make sense? Oh, so you want them to, you know, have still have a foothold. Yeah. Maybe have one or two list MPs. Yes. But not necessarily win. Yes. Okay. So and and with and with the party vote, yes, that's the important one because that's that's why I have changed my vote every election. Yeah. So like last year, right? Uh, last election, right? If we look, how how many how many how many seats? Did New Zealand first get last election? <coughs> Enough to become important. They got 11 last time. Okay. Now, who is number two on the New Zealand first list? Ron Mark. You know he was number 11 last election? Really? Yeah. So that's the reason why I voted for New Zealand first. Oh, right. So you think you say he wrote a book. New Zealand first because he wanted people like Ron Mark to stay in Parliament. Yes. Okay, let's see how many cr- how many crazy parties we have here. We, we have the you know how we you know how in England they have the monster raiding loony party for when you want to vote, but you don't, but you think that the choices are crap. Oh <coughs> uh, well. Um, yeah. I used to call that the Christian Heritage Party. The Christian Heritage. <laughs> yes. What's the Christian Heritage Party? Let's just say they were they, they, they were a Catholic party, but it ended up that the leader was into child it was a, was under child pornography. So the leader was a pedophile. Yep. What happened to him afterwards? Oh, who knows? Uh, maybe he got shanked in prison. <laughs> I, I I could just imagine someone having a golf sh- a golf shot. Yeah. That is called a shank. Yeah. With his balls. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, if you don't like your common choices, maybe you can vote for the Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis Party. <laughs> in which, if they do get in, there's only going to be one policy. <laughs> we're going to legalise cannabis. Cannab- no, we're going to legal. I, I think it's access to cannibals. Cannibals? Uh, okay, this is what's A- going to happen. Access cannibals? <laughs> like, like human cannibals? Okay. <laughs> so, 
I, what what I about can, cannonballs? Cannonballs. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can, okay, anyway, I can imagine that Aotearoa legalised cannabis party. What they're going to do is legalise cannabis, then they're going to take a nap for the rest of the rest of the term. The band one or Ajo party is going to be doing the same thing. No, no. no, no now, now, Sophie. Yes? For the Jaffa in you. Yeah? What is 10, uh, what is 1080? Do you expect me to know a lot or know a little? I don't know with you. You you know a lot about particular things that I don't know about, but I know a lot more about all of the minor things that you don't know. So we so our knowledge balances each other out because yeah. you know the things that I don't, and I know the things that you don't, and therefore together we make the ultimate pod, ultimate uh, podcast team. No podcast team. <laughs> Pub quiz team. <laughs> Problem is, we still haven't won a pub quiz yet, and I'm not too sure why. Anyway, one of, okay, 1080 is a chemical derived from a plant found usually in the Amazon. It is water soluble, it is, and is only poisonous to broadleaf plants. This is perfect. This is perfect because um, this means that it's completely possible to actually drink, to actually have pellets of 1080 in your water, in a glass of water, and it's still drinkable because it becomes inactive during water. Yes. It's that water soluble. Yes. Yeah. That, that's why you can't really poison things with Ken 80. Like, you, you can't really poison wildlife and things like that. But it's highly effective against possums and, um, and stoats and native animals. So possums and stoats and other mammals. Only, oh no, keep this in mind. 1080 is only effective against mammals. So that means that if, you want, if you're going to sprinkle an area full of native bats, you're going to kill a whole lot of native bats. But, if you're going, but New Zealand is a very unique situation in which we don't have a lot of mammals at all. Yes. It's only humans and bats, as well as pests, which is why 1080 is so effective when it comes to conservation control. And that's why the 1080 party, uh, uh, they should probably do a bit more research. Yes. Yes. But, 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 thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. By all means, carry on with your list. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, which parties do you think are the um, bellwether parties? Um, do you want to give me a definition for that term? You, don't, you haven't heard of bellwether? No. Okay, so tech, so um, in the original sense, a bellwether is a castrated ram with a bell on the neck, and it, he's the one that leads the flock. So, the, and uh, in the modern sense, this is this is why this is why you should probably play watchdogs. <laughs> in the modern sense, a bellwether is a predictor of a, a predictor of a trend. So, for example, um, you know, instead of having celebrities who are like um, obvious leaders, you have a person who's part of a group. Who's, ac who's leading the group by accident. They somehow knew that a trend is going to happen. They're the first adopters of a trend, and everyone else seems to follow them without, without the first adopter being an actual leader. They were, they're predictors of trends, but they're not Ooh. creators of trends. They're predictors, but not creators. Oh, um, now, there's only one person. There's only one party leader that... Winston Peters? Yes. No, 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 no. I wouldn't say Winston Peters is a bellwether. He's a kingmaker. Yeah, but, but, but no, no, I was meaning that when he uh, originally created New Zealand First in 93. Yeah, after, de after defecting from the um, National Party. Yes. Clever bastard, him. Yeah. He is a one hell of a clever... He, he is... He is, he is a, one hell of a clever bastard. He, he is the ultimate example of why not all Māori people are stupid. He is Machia he is a Machiavellian dick straight from Game of Thrones. Yes. <laughs> I'm like He is the ultimate example of why not all Moldy is stupid, okay? If if you say that you haven't met Mr. Peters. Yeah. He's going to <laughs> he's going to boot you out yeah. of Western Ross. Yeah, I'm I'm like Yes. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's like yeah. you know, the, his whole thing about abolishing Moldy seats. I get where he's coming from. Yeah. I totally get where he's coming from. Yes. Because we are so integrated into the general population. Yeah. We don't need the multi seats anymore. 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 We don't need them anymore. Okay. I know. But, but, uh, it's like, I get your point. Most people are against you, but I get your point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, he used to... He, another interesting thing was he used to be a lawyer. Before he got into politics, yeah, which is why he's such he's so crafty. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and I'm sorry to say I've had these thoughts over, over the last five years. Yeah, before the whole I thing. Yeah, I want to get into politics. Yeah, 
It's all a question of in what capacity. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say. Civil slave? Bureaucrat? Yeah. yeah. But if I were to contest it, there's going to be only one person that I would pick as my secretary. Who? You. <laughs> <laughs> why is that? You know why. Because I'm honest? Yeah, and we gel so well. Yeah, we gel so well. <laughs> Fist bump. Yeah, of course. I was just like, no. No, nobody else. Okay. So, so okay. Do, you want to, do you want to work for Parliament? Do you want to work in Parliament or do you want to work for the Crown? No, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, thought, I haven't decided. Yeah. So it's just like, you, you, you know, if, if I was to contest for the mayor of South Taranaki, for example. Yeah. I would want you. As the deputy. No, I would want you to be my campaign manager. Nice. So <laughs> how about, so have you watched Yes, the Minister? Oh, I love that show. Oh my goodness, Sir Humphrey Appleby. <laughs> I love that show. Oh man, it's I have the box set of a Yes Minister, but I don't have the Yes Prime Minister though. Yeah. But honestly, it's oh, I once binge watched it, and it's like, oh my god, it's it's still relevant even to this day. Oh, exactly. And it's like what forty years old. Yep. Half the actors are dead. <laughs> still relevant. Anyway, back to the party list. We got the Greens. Yes. Missing um, one. Missing one star. No, 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 no. And saying that. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you remember Nan- Nandor Tantos. He, he was an MP during... Nandor Chantos? Yes. I can't remember him. He, he was a MP in the early 2000s. He rolled up in dreads. He went to Parliament on a skateboard. Which, par- which, which party was he? Greens. Oh, so he's the resident hippie. Yes, he was the resident hippie. The resident hippie. Uh, he, he, he was the one leading the legalised cannabis part. Yeah, I actually re- I actually found out where he is now. Oh, yeah, he works for the Whakatane District Council as a resident hippie. As a resident, oh well, he's probably less hippie now because he's probably in his early forties. Well, you can still be happy. Yeah, but you can't be hipster. Yeah, that that is only that's only the result of me. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, anyway, should we talk about the wait? How did Mana only have only? This is ridiculous. Mine is the smallest party here. Yes. They only have four people. Yes. Everyone else has like, wait, New Zealand Outdoors Party also only has four people. But then again, I expected Mana to be more. The New Zealand Outdoors Party is like a fringe thingy, which I've never heard of, but the Mana Party is like, mm. I expected them to be a little bit bigger. Well, 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 let's just say that the internet and the Mana Party had yeah. a bit of divorce. Wait. So there used to be 12 people with the Internet Mana Party joining up together. Well, uh, yeah. And uh, what happened to Kim.com? Well, more than likely, well, he's still in New Zealand. Yeah. But more than likely, he's going to be extradited in the next year. <coughs> Man, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fire. He's a fire starter. It's no, 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 no. He's a, he's a firework starter. That's what he is. He's a firework starter, yeah. yeah. Weirdest. Po- weirdest personalities in politics. We have your Winston Peters. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, what's the opposite of Bill English? Because Bill English is Bill English is known for his sturdy uncleness. He is that boring as uncle. No one ever talks to you at family gatherings. Yeah. Dead right. Dead, yeah. dead right. Um, I mean, say whatever you want. He's probably like if he gets elected, in, he'll be like the most stable and boring leader we're going to have in the whole world. He will change nothing. No, no, and no. it's like maybe that's what we need because well in, in between Brexit, Trump and um, North Korea, maybe we do want someone that's like you know falls asleep, <laughs> makes us fall, fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, now I'm not sure how far back I should go with this. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh yeah, cra- oh, I wrote I wrote down a list of personalities on um, the Google Drive, but uh, oh, see if you remember them. What, who was the guy that said, um, oh yeah, um, migration between Australia and New Zealand raises the IQ of both countries? Who would say that? Who would say that? I thought you'd know. He's like one of the most colourful personalities out there. Um, well, he used to be until he died, I think. Um, who, would, who said that? Come on, let me get up Google Drive then. He... 
Didn't you know? It's such a famous quote. I thought you would know. No, no, because Google Drive isn't probably going to work. Why not? Oh, yeah, the internet. Okay. Right. Oh, come on, come on, come on. He. Okay. Um, migration, migration between Australia and New Zealand will raise the IQ of both countries. He actually... He, I'm paraphrasing. But he basically said that. The raise the IQ of both countries. That's directly with the straight... That's, that's a straight from his speech. Anyway, he's also... um. He was a bit on the controversial side. He has, he had, he's a bit like a Tim Shad. If, if Tim Shadbolt became prime minister, that's basically him, right? And um, he's also the reason why New Zealand has a constitution act. Okay, so this is what basically happened: 1984 elections. He, um, he was the leader of the National Party, and the party lost. At the time, New Zealand was actually New Zealand was facing huge um, inflation of more than 10 percent. Now, keep in mind that inflation is only supposed to be between one to three percent to be comfortable. At ten percent, it was going nuts. Every all the pro, all the prices of housing was going up by ten percent. People were oh. borrowing like mad. Who? It's fucking Muldoon. It's Muldoon, all right. You you have to do the beeping, okay? No, yeah. you have to. Yeah, I, I, I do the beeping. You do the beeping. You're swearing. <sighs> you do you do the swearing. You do the beeping. Mm. Um. Anyway, it's Muldoon. It was such a crazy cat. Uh, he was also the reason why New Zealand has a constitution act because um, he was the leader of the Na- Man- National Party, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. At the time, the economy was going nuts. What was the What was the inflation at the time? More than ten percent. It was way more than ten percent. It was way more than it was leaning. I think it was leaning more towards seventeen to twenty. Yeah. But don't quote me on this. I think it was leaning more towards. I think it was in the upper upper tens. Anyway, Labour because they won, they wanted to immediately. Well. In between elections and the actual swearing in period, you have this caretaker period, right, in which no one can really do anything. Um, but and the National Party still thinks they have power. But the Labour Party, after the vote voted it, they said they want to put immediately put in economic strategies to slow the inflation down. And because the inflation was so high, we kinda they had kinda have to do this ASAP. But the Muldoon absolutely refused. And so they went to court. And it was actually as it turns out the mandate of the public, the co- the the mandate basically shifted from um, national to labour, and therefore labour does have the right to actually get their policies through ASAP, you know. And then in 1986, they eventually passed the act, basically codifying it, saying that um, if your party lost, your your caretaker government must bow to the wishes of the incoming government, yeah. even though they technically haven't been sworn in yet. Now, now. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But wasn't that this is level? This is um. Yeah, this is first year law, by the way, constitution w- law. Wasn't this um the introduction of the goals of the Reserve Bank? I can't remember. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, the goal. Anyway, the goal now is that inflation has to be kept between one to three percent. You can't have negative inflation because that will mean the economy is not growing, and anything more than three percent means the economy is going mad. Yes. And at seven, at, and at the upper tens, the economy was going nuts. Yes. Um, it was the, off its meds. The the, the policies yeah. that I like from the Muldoon government. Yeah. Um, were the day stickers. Yeah. Oh yeah, because of petrol shortage. Yes. At the time, um, wasn't there war in um the in the Middle East? There's always a war there. Wait, I can't remember exactly what happened, but during the nineteen seventies and eighties, um, there was this huge fuel shortage, and as a result, you have the day stickers. Yes. Can you remember? Can you remember them, or do I have to explain them? Because they had the yeah, yeah, but I, I I remember them. Okay, you you'll you'll be from explaining them me then because you were there. No, no, but I wasn't there. There. Yeah. Um, like you, like the sticker of the day of the week that you had the sticker on. Yeah. You couldn't drive that day. Yeah. No matter what, you couldn't drive. So you had to carpool with somebody. Yeah. So that was like, you, if you had two cars, you would hope you would get a different sticker. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't you request stickers? I assume that you could. Yeah. But, like, you know, during that time, not many people had more than one car. 
No, you must have been hellishly rich to have two cars back then. Or, or from uh, the, the Parnell Flowers Women's Association. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about gangs earlier and what constitutes a gang, including the Parnell Women's Flowers Association, which is something I made up on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> but they look after, but in my head, they look after the Rose Gardens so over at Parnell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, they, yeah, they look around the. They help the um, horticultural staff at the Auckland Museum maintain the garden. Yeah. Well, that's that's my head cannon. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I will say that um, uh, Muldoon's Muldoon. funeral that was brilliant. Muldoon, pardon? Muldoon's funeral. Frugal? Funeral. Funeral. Yes, that was brilliant. When was that? Oh, early 1990s? I wasn't born. Um, what actually happened is that he was made a, pat- uh, a patron yeah. of the, um, the Black Power Auckland chapter. Would he like? Would he have liked that? So what they did, because because it, it's 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 ceremonial for, um, Maori, yeah, to do a haka, yeah, once, um, w- once you leave the church, it's put into the car, yeah, and from the car to the site, yeah, right, um, in like. And you could see all of these Black Power members, because uh, it was a state funeral, I think it might have been in the town hall. Yeah. All the Black Power in the back row, in yeah. the second tier, all got up and started doing a haka. Nice. And I'm like, oh. If only we could have that. <sighs> would you love that? I would love that at my funeral. Yeah. But, like, like, like I have a few requests. Yeah. <laughs> Like for, like an if, like for instance, um, hitting a golf ball into the ocean for every year I've lived. Oh yeah, that's a lot of golf balls. Yeah, hopefully. Um, I want people to sing "Always Look at the Bright Side of Life" at my funeral. Yes. Yeah, that's fan favorite, mutual favorite. Yes. Always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> Always look on the bright side of life. Life's awesome. I I think we'll stop there. Yeah, we have to. (laughs) That was fun. Um, I also want to be turned into diamonds. You and diamonds? I want to be turned into a diamond when I die. Shame shame bright like a diamond? Yeah. (laughs) Cracked, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> anyway, state funeral, Muldoon. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was just great. Yeah. Um, and then you have to talk about well, um, what you were referring to was um, Rogernomics. Yeah. Back in the early nineties. Yeah. Um, the, I, I always love it when there is a prime minister. That is that does not come from a city electorate. Right. I I just love it. When so that. where did Roger come from? Um, Ro- Roger Douglas came from Christchurch Central. Oh yeah. Uh, Muldoon came from Tamaki Makoto. Oh yeah. Um, Bill English came it came from electorate that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Literate, um, replaced with. Um, I think it's Invercargill. Whatever happens, he's a farm boy. Yeah, it, 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 it's like it's called was it Clutha slash Southland. Oh yeah. Um, I think he counts his girlfriends when he goes to sleep. Yeah, it, it, and when he went to New Plymouth on Saturday, yeah, it's like I know the real reason why you're here, Bill. Why? I know the real reason. You're just in New Plymouth, so you can just watch the All Blacks game. <laughs> That's all you were there for. You don't care about the people. Oh, that's rather patriotic, isn't it? Isn't it patriotic to support the All Blacks, though? Yes. Yeah. But I say, um, hey, did, did you just get my joke about spill English? Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Um, I'm, okay, I'm not implying anything here. It's just a joke. Yes. <laughs> about the fact that he's a farmer and all. Yes. Yeah. Um, because, because like... 
like like for instance Jim Bolger yeah. was from Taranaki King King Country. Oh yeah. Which is this very rural. Bolger, he sounds familiar. What did he do? As a prime minister, what did he do? He was the one who started Kiwi Saver, started getting rolling. Oh yeah. Um, I, I know Helen Clark finished that off. Oh, so he's Bol- So he, so he's the wait. Was it Bolger, then Shipley, then Clark? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I have an affection with Bolger because because we are we are alumni from the same university. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because when I when I graduated, he got to, I got to shake his hands. I was just like, oh, I felt great. Yeah. I felt great. Mm. I mean, it's quite funny. Um, well, St Cuthbert's is full of the who's who. Of all, of um, New Zealand, right? Yeah. So you know, um, Stephen Joyce. Yes. His daughter's his daughter's like in year five now, six or you. No, oh, Stephen Joyce cracks me up. Stephen Joyce's daughter is in primary school at St Cuthbert's. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, 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 before we head, I'm a few, I'm a few years behind Christian Christine Fife, who is of course the daughter of Rob Fife. Now, now, can I tell yeah. you? Can I tell you a little bit of trivia about? The uh, right honourable oh. Stephen Joyce. Oh, just be- just before you do, John Key's daughter used to go to St Catherine's before she transferred to somewhere else. That's oh, what's her name? Um, I don't, I don't know. She's Miss Key to us. Uh, Steph. Steph. Stephanie Key. She used to go to St Catherine's before she moved on. Yeah. She didn't complete schooling there, so I have no. Anyway, St Catherine's is full of who's who's, you know. Who's who's? Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay, now, Steve, right honourable Stephen Joyce. Stephen Joyce. Oh, I always love this fact. Go. Um, be, be, before the whole children thing and before he moved to Auckland. Yeah? He was a radio DJ. And he used to he used to be a rubbish man as well. He told yep, us all yep, that. Yep. He used to be a radio DJ over at Taranaki? Taranaki, yes. Taranaki. He used to be a radio DJ at Taranaki. He told us all this at year 11. And he used to be a rubbish guy. And what else did he do? He t- now, now, because he, he used to do the 12, 12 to 2 p.m. Do you remember, shift. Do you remember listening to him? Probably. Oh, yeah. On 93.2 Energy FM. Oh, yeah. Which is now More FM. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he told us that More FM wanted this. Because he helped start up that um, radio company. Then he said, well, we got sold off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's it, it's 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 just amazing how how detailed I know things. It's ridiculous how. Yeah, I know. I'm more, I'm more of a generalist. I work better with ideas than facts. Whereas Mike's better with facts and ideas. Yeah. Anyway, have you finished reading my essay? <clears throat> Pardon. I think we need to bleep that. Why? <laughs> no, I haven't. No, I haven't. I've been trying to organize everything, so it's it, like. So Hurricane Sophie can be as less category as possible. <laughs> oh man, Mike, please stop hating me. It's only going to poison your soul. Oh, my... I'm, very, I'm very sorry about the whole hurricane situation. Oh, so that's why you gave me that poisoned apple. It's not poisoned. You sure about that? I'm very sure. Maybe small, but it's not poisoned. You, 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 sure about, you sure about that? I'm very sure about that, yeah. Besides, we, we picked an apple each. It could have been any apple. I could have actually poisoned the two of them. That would be the witch's excuse. Wait, what? That would be the witch's excuse. Witches. Have you have you ever read Sleeping Ugly? Have you have you read that? No. But well, if you know the if you know the story of Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. She was given a poisoned apple. Yeah. Oh no! Wait. Snow White. Snow White. Yeah. Well, because because I am. I am grey mouldy. Yeah. And okay, so you you gave me a poisoned apple. Yeah. You're no longer Snow White. You are. <laughs> yeah. Wait. You are still Snow White. Your your skin is as pale as ink. <laughs> yeah, I am as pale as a paint can. Yeah. Do you get that reference? No. What's another term for a paint can? Pale. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, shall we talk about how MMP works? <laughs> oh no, should we talk about someone else? Uh, do you think Helen Clark had a more successful political career after she left New Zealand? Oh. <sighs> now, that, 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 is 
she probably is she probably the most successful post post parliamentarian? So far, I'm not too sure what's John. Probably. Well, she definitely earned a damehood as opposed to say, well, what does John Key do? That's the part I don't get. Um, well, you know, Helen Clark did like a million other things after she left New Zealand. And now she's coming back for a bit of a holiday. Yeah. Um, well, for, a well earned, for a well earned retirement. But I'm not too sure what John Key's done. That being said, he still has lots of things to do still. Yes. So he might earn his knighthood later, but. Right at this moment, we're not too sure yet. Now, he might earn his night to put later. We never know. The question I ask. Yeah. If Helen Clark is number one. Yeah. Would Mike Moore be number two? What did Moore do afterwards? He became the head of WTO. World Trade Organization. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be number two. Um, Helen Clark was like. Helen Clark became the third most powerful person in the UN. Yes. So yeah. So I think that you yeah. know, it's a, it's a pity she's not. She, it's a pity she's not secretary general. But anyway. Yeah. Um. I kind of. It kind of sucks. Yeah. Because like, like like if you think about it, we were the right country to have the secretary general. Yeah, because we're so neutral. Exactly. Yeah. We are everyone, so neutral. Everyone loves us. <laughs> oh, but no, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. We're on a middle ground on pretty much everybody. Yeah. We're not loved and we're not, not hated. hated. Which is actually a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Oh. Oh, and um, Tim Shadbolt, the eternal mayor. Yes. When is he going to be? When is he going to stop being the mayor of Chicago? Now, um. <sighs> Probably on his deathbed. Um, <laughs> on his deathbed, it's like, oh, great, I'm about to die. I'm going to pass the mayoral ship to someone else. Now, now, Just have elections now. Forget about me. I'm not going to lie. Yeah? I I love Tim Shadbuck. Yeah. I, 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 you know, during his early 20s, he used to be very big on the protesting scene with Helen Clark. Oh, but and were, he, were he and Helen Clark mates? Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. Like, like those two, um, Peter Dunn was the... Um, the guy with the bow tie? Yeah, the guy with the bow tie. Yeah. He was the uh, president of the Victoria University Student Union. You're kidding! Um, was it? Why, did, why did, did they become so boring? <laughs> they used to be so cool when they were younger. Um, <laughs> then you got Sue Bradford. Oh, wow. Um, she's a, she was a Green MP and now her daughter's... Um, a news presenter for TV One. Wait, so that means that everyone... So are you telling me that all the politicians of today used to be protesters of yesteryear? Uh, no, I, I, I wouldn't say that. But, uh, but the colourful ones. Yeah, the colourful ones. The, the remembered ones. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that a lot of mayors yeah. should be more like that. Should, should, should be more enthusiastic about everything. Yeah. Shadbolt's Shadbolt didn't really grow up, not like not like the others like who became boring. Shadbolt still has a spunk of personality that reminds us of teenagehood and young adulthood, you know. Yes. Yeah, and um, so he's so he's probably going to be mere until his de- deathbed. Yes, or, wow. or, or, or or else or close to it. Close to it, yeah. Yeah, like, 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 like for instance, if he had cancer and it was terminal. Yeah. That's like that's why nickname nicknames him the Eternal Mia. Yeah. Yeah, because he's going to always going to be Mia of somebody. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Something. Yeah. And, and, and I've said this numerous times about certain people. Yeah. Those are the type of people that need to be immortalized. Yeah. Um, like Attenborough, David Attenborough. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Um, because like like what's was so fixated on rugby. Yeah. We are so fixated. And especially during the um, early 60s, and to, even towards the, um, yeah. the the start of professionalism in the early 90s. Yeah. Um, a lot of people used to, a, a lot of the All Blacks used to go away for months at a time. Yeah. And it used to be up to the wives to survive on a single income. Those are the people that should be immortalised. The wives of the All, all Blacks? Yeah. Rather than, because they had a far bigger job. 
Yeah. Taking care of their kids and all of that on a single income. They're the hero. They're the heroes of our day. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, before we go, we've been talking about an hour now. Um, how does MMP work? Okay. Um, by the way, if you live in Germany, you might you might understand <laughs> us better <laughs> because we have a very similar system to Germany. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, 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 MMP Germany started off first. Yeah. And then we joined in in 96. And has any other countries joined? There's a few. Um, there's about eight. Eight? There's about eight. There isn't too many. Well, few and far between. Okay. So, so the way it works... Okay, firstly, we have to talk about the threshold. All right. Let's, actually, let's have an example. Let's start with the minor party because they're very small. So we can, so it gets things going, you see? Yes. So we have four people in the minor party. Yes. And each of those four... Okay, I was talking about this in year 13. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. And I will stop if I forgot something, so I'll get you to go. Okay. There. Cause, cause, because I'm the one who did study level 7 politics. Yeah, he studied level 7 politics. I only studied, <laughs> only studied level 3. Uh, so, therefore, I'm kind of better in explaining it because I actually, I'm more of a lay person rather than a professional, okay. professional person. Okay. You can actually add in more examples. Please do. And okay. do correct me if I'm wrong. But let me start with the minor party because they're very small. Uh, so we have uh, four people. Connor, Lisa, James and Tracy. Each of them would actually um, contest for a seat in, in one of the many, in, in many of the many electorates around New Zealand. And um, they're also going to be vying for the party vote. So how, so how much, how, what's the percentage of party votes do you need to get before you get a seat in Parliament? Now the voter threshold is five percent. Five percent. But for if but once you get over five percent, you get one seat. How many more? How many more percentages do you need to actually get another seat? So you have no, five, no, 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 five, no, yeah, no. If you go over five percent, yeah, you get five percent. You get five. You get five percent of the seats. Okay. So the party votes. Is, the party votes work like this. Uh. Your, the number of seats you get in Parliament is dependent on how many, how much of a party vote you get around New Zealand. For example, if you get five, for example, if you get more than five percent, you get five percent of the seats available in Parliament. And um, how many seats are usually available? One hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty, give or take. Ha, run about one hundred and twenty, give or take. Um, so you get ten percent of, you get eleven percent of party votes. You get eleven percent of the seats, which is basically one hundred twenty times um, zero point one one. And um, the second vote is for the um, electorate. So if you win the electorate seats, you if you win, okay, this is what's happened. If you win the electric seat, you get first you get first choice. You no, if you get win the electric seat, you're guaranteed a seat in parliament. Yeah, um, and let, 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 let me just put that in there. Just okay. to, just add in the nature of fact. Yeah. There are seventy one electorates in New Zealand. There's 71 electorates in New Zealand. If you win one of those electorate seats, you are guaranteed a seat in Parliament. And let's just say that the Mana Party won three... Mana's so small, they're a bad example. Yes. Let's go for New Zealand People's Party. Let's no, 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 no. You go with the mainstreamer. That is, you go for a small party with a high... With a, with a, <laughs> it's going to get a low percentage vote. Like ACT? Yeah, I'll go with Act. Okay, okay. Act only ever wins one seat. <laughs> so this but is, hypothetically. Okay, okay. This is how Act wins with the one seat. They never get more than they they, they don't get more than five percent of the votes in New Ze of the party votes in New Zealand. However, they do. But however, they always win the Epsom seat, which means they have to be in Parliament, because if, even though they won less than five percent of the vote, because um, they won the uh, election seat. But anyway. You know how we have the list. You know how we have the list in pairs, right? So we have Connor at one, Lisa at two, James at three, Trace Lee at four. Let's just say that for let's, let's just say that we change. Let's oh, let's no, let's do it going at. Let's just say that for some odd reason, Act finally got more than five percent of the votes, which means they finally got five seats. And um and let's just say that somehow six of their somehow six of their um of their MPs got. Elected and got elected into the um, residential rights. What was it? The the electorate. Electorate seats. Even though they only won five seats in the parliament, 
they get to have six seats because representation within the lecture is more important than um, how many seats you want in the party vote. Wait, wait, no, wait, no. It cancels, it cancels each other out. What do you mean? If you want six electric seats, but you only have 5% of the party vote... Yeah, it cancels each other out. So who? how many seats do they get? Five or six? Six. They only get six, yeah. Yeah. They only they get to have six. Um, so the people with the people with priority for the seats are the ones who won the electric who won the uh, the electric votes. So for example, let's just say that number one, let's just say that the, the number ten to nineteen guys won um electric seats, but so the, you know number ten to twenty. So let's just say the ten people from this from the seats eleven to twenty from the numbers eleven to twenty won electric seats. And yet the party only wins five seats. That means that the guys from ten to eleven, ten to twenty, get the seats, not the guys at the top, but say like wait, one or two or something. Correct. Because, um, as they say, representation matters. Yeah. Yeah. If, if if there is a difference. Yeah. Between the electorate and the party vote. Yeah. Then that is the term called list MPs. List MPs. Yeah. So the list MPs. So let's say that you're number eleven to twenty on the list. And you all won electric seats, and yet your party only wins five seats. The guy from 11 to 20 gets, still gets to have a seat. And the guys from, say, like 1 till 9, who are supposed to be at the top of the list, and supposed to get first priority, they don't get seats at all. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like, like take, for example, yeah. Yeah. if you won six seats, won six seats. In, in the party vote. Yeah, and you won 6% of the vote. Yeah. So, therefore, you get seven seats. Yeah, seven seats. And then you go down the list. Yes. So then, let's just say that um, the guys, the list of the list MPs, guys from 10 till, five, 10 till 15, let's just say five electorate wins, and then they manage to win um, six seats in Parliament. The, the, guy, the, the, guys, the five guys who won the electric seats, they get, their, they get their seats first, then you go down the list. Then David Seymour gets, the, gets to have a seat in Parliament. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. And what else? Oh, so what the what's the maximum number of MPs? One hundred twenty-eight. Like there's only hundred. Okay, initially I thought there were only one hundred twenty seats in Parliament, <laughs> and if there was an over if there were overhung people, they have to put in temporary chairs. Like yes. they had to put in like baby stools or something rather. Um, uh, but I was evidently mistaken. There are actually one hundred twenty proper seats in Parliament that people can sit on with a desk. Yeah, the and microphones. The most there has ever been yeah. so far yeah. under the MMP system is 122. 122. How did that work? Uh, because because there was overhang. So how did the so where did the overhang come from? L- like take for instance, um, the, there were list MPs from the top parties. Yeah. But as well, there were minimal party votes for the people who won the electorates. So, oh, yeah. like, 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 take for instance, D- David Seymour is a, is a case in point. Yeah. Um, he, he won Epson, but he'll only get 0.1% of the vote. And, in, and especially last election, yeah. United Fu- Future only got 23,000 party votes. Yeah. But Peter Dunn still won Hu- uh, Huaru, so therefore he was still an MP. Oh, yeah. For Huaru? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um... So that's how you get um, somehow more MPs than usual. Yeah, the... yeah, it's it's all about disparities. Yeah. So um, they so a lot of people actually prefer MMP over first past the post because it's technically more representative of what people want. Yes, um, and and it also allows for lots of minor parties to grow as well. Yeah, it doesn't kill off the minor parties. But winner does not take all. But yeah, yeah. But the negative part is, um, you get stagnated process. Yeah. And a stagnated progress. Why is that? Because you have to, um, appeal to uh, appeal to the expectations of the, you have to have consideration of the other parties. Yes. That you well, are you are you are in government before you start to push a law through. Yeah, because you have to work with other parties now. You can't just put it push your own mandate anymore. There hasn't been, there hasn't been majority government ever since MMP has been put into New Zealand, right? Yeah, it's been close, but there's always been close ones. But you know, like oh, National's got forty nine percent of the vote, but then but there has never ever been a majority government. Yeah. 
Ever since m has been through. So, like, yeah, was it... Oh, I'm trying to think. Was it... 2011? Yeah. National got 62 out of 122. Not quite majority, but so close. Yeah. So, you know, 60 of 122. That's right. 60 yeah. out of 122. Wow. So close. But it's in yet so far. But, uh, any other things about MMP we should talk about? Um, not really. You, you, you kind of hit it on the button. Um, yeah. But, like, in regards to what do you think is going to be the age group loser of this election? University students. Okay. Well, the girls, we're probably not going to vote again because we're lazy bums. I mean... Yeah, yeah and, and we talked about this in the last podcast. Yeah. Um, I mean, me, Mike, and our mutual friend Josie are so rare. We're basically like voters. We're voters, but we're so rare. Yeah, well, it's like, for me, this is my fifth election. Yeah. And this oh, sorry, been... wait. Wait. Wait, no, no, I'm trying to think. Yeah. This is going to be my first one, and we're going to vote today as well. So, guys. Yeah. This is going to be a fifth election. Fifth this election. is going to be my first election. I'm going to vote today because I set up the advanced voting voting booth over AUT now. So, I'm going to, I have to go to WA to hire a laptop, and I'm going to go to a vote, and I have to go to class. And I am so excited. Uh, well, well, I know. I get excited about everything I know. I know. I, 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 I know, and um, you, you're going to get... Oh, you should have went at one o'clock, but that's all right. Well, it's happened. Nikki K was going to pee him. AUT. How do I care? <laughs> <laughs> She's only the National MP for Auckland Central. Uh, yeah. That, that, nah. means, that means that our mutual friend would have been stalking her from 10 feet behind. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um... But other than that, um, I, I still haven't decided yet. Uh, you still have until the 23rd. Yeah, um, uh, like more than likely. Yeah. Lo- lo- like last time I voted on the Thursday uh, or, the fr- or the Friday, one to two days before. Yeah. Um, the rest of the time I voted on the day. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, um, I think I should bring this back. Australia have election sausages. On the day of the elections, all the voting booths, there'll be sausages going flat out. And once you vote, you can have a bread and a sausage. <laughs> That's quite funny. Um, but uh, I will say... Um, election uh, sausage, uh, uh, election <laughs> sausage, election sausage. As a person yeah? who has voted numerous times... Yeah? Take in your environment. Yeah? Be- because I know for a fact... Yeah? Because you haven't voted yet. I know that what usually happens... What happens? There's I I become disillusioned. I stop voting. No, 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 no. You know, you don't start voting. But what you'll do is that bef- you'll get your voting form and all that sort of stuff. But you'll get a lot of people around you trying to advocate for their agenda, but without interrupting you. Yeah, my parents, you mean? No, no, I mean, I mean like strangers with. Um, Election election banners and oh, ribbons, yeah, and yes. all that sort of stuff. Junk mail. Yeah, so I've been receiving a lot of junk mail from all the parties recently. No, 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 but, but like, 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 like they'll be wearing like their t shirts, yeah, and having their ribbons. I've seen those, yeah. Yeah, but they'll have in it inside the the polling booth, which they are fully entitled to do. Yeah, but the only rule is they cannot interrupt you. Oh yeah, I know. And they cannot talk to you. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. I, w- um, I might wear all, or- well, if I was more organised, maybe I would wear an orange morph suit into the next election, like in the, in the next election booth. Now, now, no, you've just given me a great idea. Which is? How about I wear my orange board shorts and my orange polo shirt to voting? Yeah. <laughs> and didn't we have an idea for Frank? Pretending to be the or- the orange guy. Now oh, I, I've had this thing for we've had this thing for a while, 
and, and, and about you know well the orange guy is the trademark Chris it is trademarked we talked about this I, last week I looked it up he is trademarked I know, I know. by the electoral commission yeah and he need he well his last day is in a week and a half yeah and he has no more work for three weeks yeah. two or three years what is he gonna do so we're thinking about like you know dressing up as the orange guy going to wins and asking for a job <laughs> as the orange guy <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, harmless prank and all, but... Yeah, no, exactly. And it, you know, we talked about the last podcast as well. That's the way that pranks should be done. Harmless, you know? A bit of a laugh. Yeah. You know, I, I have other ideas, such as, you know, ele- attaching electromagnets to the bottom of, uh, bottom of, uh, cupboards and things like that. You know, the, you know the cupboard floors? Yes. So that's, uh, when you turn it on, you can't, you, you can't get your kitchen pans out. <laughs> Oh. And it's like, I, I can't cook breakfast. What's wrong? And then I come downstairs, it's like I just turn the turn off like there. Uh, April Fools. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's harmless. All you need to do is flip on the switch, and suddenly everything's back to normal again. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we be hilarious though, because like you have the initial, I can't get this damn thing away. I can't do it. I can't cook breakfast. No, I can't cook breakfast. Cook breakfast. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> oh well. And on that note, I think I should have to get going. I need to hire a laptop and study da da and vote. Now, you do know how to hire a laptop, right? I do. Yep. Yeah. I need to get my ID card and things like that. And, of course, with my laptop, I should be able to do things like read the emails from as yet undecided at gmail.com. Or, or you can look at Sophie9709 on Twitter or the notifications. Well, except for Instagram, though, because it's not my account. And I can finally keep track of the stuff on at AIU Podcast on Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. Yes, and I got a notification yesterday over a, a, a dynamic banter joke. Yeah? That um, I sent to Mike Felzone. Yeah? Who is one of the um, hosts hosts of that channel. And, and, like, he has this big thing about the group, this group called LFO. Yeah? Uh, which was a very obscure... Um, boy band from the 90s yeah uh, and, and he goes on about it every time so, oh, yeah. so I sent him a thing that's like when when Mike Falzone talks about um, LFO on Dynamic Banter and it's a gif from me myself and Harry oh really um, and it's like Jim Carrey going oh oh <laughs> here we go <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Vicky, we contact you. At least you still have a computer, unlike me. Well, I have two. Yeah. If you count the tablet. Yeah. Uh, our tablet. Our tablet. Le tablet. Le Um, And you can contact me on the Manus. And um, since this week, as we have recorded the podcast, is is Te Wiki or Te Māori. Uh, te Reo. Te Wiki or Te Reo Māori. Haerera. Oh, hi there. Kaki te ano a popo nei. And have a good evening. I thought you got to do a John Campbell there. <laughs> you know how you used to catch Sign of Campbell Live? Kaki, kaki te ano and have a good evening. Kaki te ano. And have a good evening. <laughs>